Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Julia and I am a current medical student. Today, I wanna to hit on a major topic and that is gap years. This is huge, 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 especially for those of you who are pre-med or wanting to go down the medical school route. I will say that although in this video, I'm going to talk in the context of going to medical school, gap years are relevant for anyone in any field in which you have higher level of education beyond undergrad. So anyone going to professional or graduate school, gap years are relevant. So this is for you. Tune in. Before we jump in, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're tuned into all the latest content. So gap years. Gap years are typically one or more years between undergraduate college and professional school in which individuals typically work, go on to get further education, do research, participate in volunteer activities, or simply enjoy the time off by traveling or relaxing. The reason why I wanted to dedicate an entire video to gap years is because they have become increasingly more common in recent years for students in many different fields. There are various reasons why a student would want to take gap years, and we'll explore some of those in this video. In a sense, you can think of gap years as the time between major stages of life for an individual. Now, exactly what you do at that time is up to you and is a personal decision. But in this video, there are four major factors that I want you to consider if you are thinking about gap years. The first is readiness and preparation. So as far as readiness goes, if you are somebody who may feel like they need a break or want to step back a little bit from learning and education in the classroom, before you jump into another four plus years of schooling, then I would strongly consider gap years. This will definitely help you get that break that you might be longing for and avoid burnout. In regard to preparation, if like me and my struggle with the MCAT, if you find yourself in a place in which you are not prepared to apply to medical school or you have applied and are not having much success, then you should consider gap years and what exactly you'll do with that time. If it's an application or an MCAT issue, then you should consider post back programs or a master's degree. These options will help you boost your academic performance and will make you a much stronger competitive applicant when you do decide to apply for medical school. But these aren't your only options, so don't feel pigeonholed into only doing a post back program or a master's degree. There are many other things you can do during gap years in which you can get experiences that are valuable. People totally underestimate travel or they think that there's this notion that people are going to think I just traveled for a year. No. By traveling and experiencing new cultures and diversity and enhancing and expanding your worldview, this is valuable. These are experiences that are so underrated and undervalued by students who are considering gap years. As long as you know how to sell the experience, then you'll be fine. Do whatever you want to do in that time. So the second factor that I want you to consider when thinking about gap years is finances. One thing you will learn about me throughout these videos is that I absolutely hate, hate the fact that finances drive our decisions around education. It's sad, it's disappointing, and I hate it. But it's life, it's reality, and it's the world in which we live and the systems in, in which we're trying to navigate. And I would be naive and wrong to not acknowledge the fact that finances are indeed a major factor on students' minds. So where finances kind of come into play is that many students decide to take one or more gap years in order to work and save money or to start paying off some of their student loan debt. This allows those individuals to be in a better place financially before taking the next step in their educational journey, which is another huge financial commitment. Medical school is expensive as hell, you guys. Some students just want to make sure that they are in the best place financially for themselves or their families before they take on that expensive educational commitment. So whatever's best for you personally, do that. But the last thing that I will say in this topic of finances, and I really want to emphasize this, is that at the end of this journey, this journey in which you are trying to embark of medical school and becoming a doctor, you will be a physician. You will be a doctor. And doctors of all different types make pretty comfortable livings. So please keep that in mind and do not let finances be the thing that deter you or sidetrack you from your real goal. 
it will happen by some mean, by some way. And I'm going to be doing some videos on financial aid and financing medical school and scholarships. So stay tuned for that if you're somebody who wants to start looking at some of those resources. So moving on to our third topic when thinking about gap years, and that is experience. So experience is a really subjective term, right? And anything could really be an experience, but that's the point is what experience did you get during that time? There are academic experiences or professional experiences or simply life experiences that are invaluable. So let's use clinical experience as an example. If you are able to secure a clinical experience type of job like scribing or a medical assistant, this is such a great strategic way to not only make you a more competitive applicant, but to also just help you professionally by being able to work with patients and enhance some of those communication skills and clinical skills that are invaluable. This will help you get insight and expertise into the medical field that a lot of your peers may not have when you're coming into medical school. It will help you in your classes. It will help you on your clinical rotations. And it's just overall a great option if you can secure a clinical job. On the other hand, There are other things such as traveling or mission trips, which are completely different, but they may satisfy you internally and allow you to experience more of the world and have more of a worldview before beginning this huge education commitment. So whatever experience or experiences you decide to have during your gap years, just find the significance in them. Try to do meaningful things, whether it be things that help you professionally or academically or just help you as a person to grow and live life. And the fourth and final factor that you should consider when thinking about gap years is maturity. College is a much different experience than medical school, law school, or other professional schools. When you are at the professional school level, you are held to a much higher standard than you are in undergrad. And for students coming directly from undergrad, This transition isn't always clear, and they could kind of see it as a continuation of their undergrad experience because there was no time in between. I know for me personally, I currently have classmates who are 20 or 21 years old who are training to be doctors and actually nearing the end of our medical school training and who are learning to have really tough and uncomfortable conversations around life and death and race, sex, drugs and alcohol, and many other topics. There is a level of maturity and professionalism that is required of a person, especially a doctor, in these conversations. And a lot of this maturity is gained from just simple life experience, from family and friends, the workplace and your colleagues. But if an individual never had some of those experiences because they're coming right from high school, to college, to medical school, then this maturity will have to be something, a part of the hidden curriculum that they call in schools that must be learned, skills that they must learn in their medical school training. Obviously, this is possible, and many people will learn these skills as they're training to become a doctor. But for those students who are coming in with that life experience and coming in maybe a little bit older, then this is something that just might be more natural. Along the same lines as maturity, gap years can also help an individual establish a sense of independence. This comes with living on your own and learning how to pay bills and experiencing real adulthood because when you're in college and even graduate or professional school, it could often feel like you're not a real adult because you are a student and possibly paying for your living via loan money. So coming from experiences where you were really experiencing adulthood just gives you that sense of independence that you know what it's like to be a real adult. So as I wrap this video up, I just wanna leave you with a few more key points. The first is that gap years are very commonly brought up in medical school interviews. So whatever it is that you do decide to do during your gap years, just make sure it is productive and worthwhile and significant to you. I don't mean productive as in you need to be grinding and working hard every single day, but rather making sure whatever it is that you are doing with your time is something that's important to you and something that you will be able to articulate to your interviewers or to committees and explain why it was significant and meaningful to you and will help you be a better applicant to their school. Secondly, beware not to let gap years distract you. 
if medical school is the goal, then keep that in mind and use gap years as a means to an end. But do not get content and comfortable and forget about the goal. I have personally been a witness to this many, many times as I've seen people who want to go to medical school and they take time off and get really great jobs in the medical field, get complacent, and then never end up pursuing medical school. While people obviously have their own right to pursue whatever it is that they want to do that is in their best interest, I personally am an advocate for always pursuing your dreams and your goals. So do not let gap years distract you or get you off the path of your main goal. And lastly, don't be afraid of time off. I know that the road to medicine is a long one, a real long one. And a common concern that I often hear is, oh, I don't want to take time off. I'm going to be so old by the time I graduate. I want to just start and get it over with. Trust and believe me that I have said a lot of those things and experienced those exact sentiments. But now that I am in medical school and nearing graduation, there is nothing that I have ever been more confident in saying than my decision to take gap years was the best thing that ever happened to my academic and professional journey. And it was for every reason, particularly those four main factors, readiness and preparation, finances, experience, and maturity that I listed in this video. By the time I started medical school, I had traveled and seen so much of the world, moved to a new city on my own, got a job in the clinical setting and got to work directly with patients, and overall just grew as a person and came into medical school so much more mature. It's funny because in my small team-based learning group in medical school that we're assigned, so there's six of us in that group, they always tell me that they look up to me and I'm so mature and the way I handle tough conversations with our patients and they try to model things after me. And I'm thinking in my head, like, this is directly because of my gap years and because I came in a little bit older than you guys and I came in, you know, already having worked with patients. So it's just a completely different vibe for me. You know, this is work for me. And a lot of people don't consider medical school to be work. It's like, you know, just school or college. And I'm like, these are going to be my bosses one day and my colleagues and these patients are going to be my customers. Like this is work and I'm going to treat it as such. Whereas other people, they're just there to learn and it's like shits and giggles. So all of that to say, the road to medicine is a long one no matter what you decide. And I personally believe that the benefits of taking gap years far outweigh the additional time tacked on. I hope that this video really provided you guys with some insight and some guidance as far as taking gap years. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.